Uh, thank you all very much for being here. This will be a, a nice little intimate session today, which will be a, which will be a lot of fun. Um, today, we really are going to focus on the things that you all want to focus on. Um, this is, and I'll go ahead and share my screen so you can kind of see the see the graphic here. This is the uh, online attractions roundtable. And I will, I will be honest, this was really born out of feedback that I got out of a previous session. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a session on training your teams for relaunch. And um, we use the breakout rooms here in Zoom. And one of the things that I heard loud and clear on the feedback was that people loved the breakout rooms. And they said it was great to be able to talk to people and to share ideas and to, and to, to network with people. But they weren't long enough, is what I heard. And uh, we didn't get to really dive into things as much as we would have liked. So I said, well, I'm just going to create a session. I have no idea who's going to show up. But create a session where we get to use that, uh, that technology. Um, I know that people are wanting to get out and do things and wanting to share and wanting to talk to people about things. So um, I figured why not, you know, create an opportunity, create a space where we can do that here uh, via Zoom. So today is going to be a lot about the breakout rooms. And that's why I said in the, in the, in the email and everything, great to have, you know, your camera and, and um, uh, a microphone so that you guys can, can share and talk and, and interact in that way. Um, and so I also wanted to, to kind of just talk a little bit about the the sort of subtitle here of network, connect, and share. Um, somewhat self-explanatory, but you know, when I think about what we do in this industry that I think we do really well is we 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 get to network with a lot of people. And my hope that part of what we do today, you get to meet and interact with people that you've never met before and you could potentially get new ideas from and, and have a new new person in your network, which would be fantastic. Also, in terms of connecting, it's not just about connecting people, but to me, this is also about sort of connecting the dots, right? So you may have an issue that you're dealing with. I know David's been open, Sean's been open for a while, and there may be things that they're dealing with. You know, I think David put in masks that he wanted to talk a little bit about. So, you know, is there is there some dots that we can connect on the issues that you're having with solutions that somebody else may already have? Um, and then just sharing, you know, this is an opportunity for all of us to share best practices, share things that we've seen, share things that we've um, tried. Um, I think the 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 good thing, if there's a good thing that comes out of this, this experience is that none of us are experts. So you could come up with something that you think is totally off the wall and you're, you're like, I'm just going to throw this out there. Let's just spitball this. But it could be something that come, becomes a, a standard practice across the industry uh, because it was something that you know, none of us had experience with before. So I really want you to feel comfortable to share your ideas, share your thoughts. As I mentioned before, one of the pieces of feedback I got on the previous roundtable session was that those roundtable bits of the session were not long enough. So they were about five minutes when I did them before. Um, so this time we're going to take about 10 to 15 minutes or so uh, on those topics so that you can not only get to know the people a little bit, but also really be able to share some ideas and, and best practices and those type of things. So we'll, we'll get a little, uh, little deeper in our conversations uh, as we go through that stuff too. So. Okay. All right. So with that, I think I know everybody. So there's no, no need for me to do a huge introduction, but I do want to do an introduction of the people that are on the call because, um, because we have a small group, I think it's going to be fun to get to know each other. And because you're going to be interacting, it's good to kind of know who is here. So here's what I'm going to ask you to share. I'm going to ask you to share your name, your role, and the company or attraction that you work for. And then one word that describes you that starts with the same letter as your first or last name. Okay, so I'll give you an example. So my name is Matt Heller, you guys know that. Uh, my role is founder of Performance Optimist Consulting. And a word that I think describes me that starts with the same letter as my last name is helper. I feel like that's what I'm kind of here to do in this industry. That's what I'm here to do on, the, on, on this earth is to help other people. So that's the word that I would use that describes me that uh, starts with the same letter as my last name. So um, that's what we want to hear from you. I'm going to stop sharing the screen so that we can see each other. At least I can see the, the, um, uh, the gallery view here of everybody. And let's see, is there anybody that'd like to volunteer to go first and introduce themselves? Thank you, Ben. I really, oh, David actually put his hand up, saved by the bell. So David, you go ahead first. Okay, so uh, David Crandell, uh, General Manager of Fiesta Village Family Fun Park in Southern California. And um, a word that best describes me, 
with the letter of my last name, uh, it, C. It, it could would be probably. It could also well, be D, D or D or C. Well, I like C because it's committed, but not like committed to my job, but I should be committed to an institution or something. But uh, no, I would definitely say dedicated. Um, I have been with this park for uh, almost 20 years now, and I just love this industry. And I grew up always of going to or loving going to uh, family fun centers more so than the big theme parks. So to be in this industry and running a, a park of my own is just like a dream come true. That's fantastic. Awesome. Um, I would, I would have said committed to for the asylum part, but that's, that's neither here nor there. All right. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> so Ben, I was going to, going to volunteer you. So you go ahead next. I can jump in next. I'm Ben Story. I'm the CEO of Avius and we provide customer feedback solutions. So survey devices, been in the attractions world for 15 years um, this year, as IAPA reminded me as we renewed our membership the other day. Um, so we work with a number of attractions. So I'm kind of on this to, I guess, share some of my expertise, but also take any learnings back to my clients. Perfect. Um, and I'm going to have to go with my last name and take yes and go with spontaneous um, in respect of, I never quite know what a normal day will entail for me. Um, I could end up on a plane. I could end up all over the place. So it's, um, it's good fun, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Awesome. Thank you. That's a, that's a great, a great word that goes along with you is spontaneous. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate that. <laughs> so just to, so I can kind of follow this along, I'm just going to go along my screen. So Megan, you're next. Hi, uh, my name is Megan Major. Uh, I am the admissions and retail manager at Lake Compounds, located in Bristol, Connecticut, the oldest amusement park in America. Um, so my last name and first name start with the same letter, so I didn't get many options <laughs> there. Uh, but I guess I would have to go with Mary. I am a very upbeat person. I'm always looking on the positive ends of things. Um, and yeah, that's really the only positive word I could think of that starts with an M as well. But I am super excited to hear from everybody and learn um, a lot about other parks because honestly, I haven't really talked to many other parks outside of the scope of Palace Entertainment. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. You know, when I, when I put that, that um, exercise together, I never thought of somebody that had the same letter for both, both names. So I'm, I'm glad that you rose to that challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Sean, you're next. Hey, I'm Sean Women. I'm the Vice President of Membership and Guest Experience with Zoo, in Atlanta, Zoo Atlanta in Atlanta, Georgia. And I will have to go with wonder in that I find that I'll ask a lot of questions saying, I wonder if we do this, will that happen? Or, hey, team member that I'm coaching, I wonder if we can tweak your thought on that or wonder if we can think of a different way of doing that. So I, I like to, to think of different ways to do things and, you know, throw the spaghetti against the wall and see if it sticks or not. And if it doesn't, we throw it back in the boiler. Um, so I, I like to, to think and, and be curious. About things. Excellent. And, and Sean, I appreciate all the different ways that you kind of categorize wonder, right? There's a lot of different ways that we can, we can look at that. So that's awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, Stephanie, you're next. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Stephanie Good. I am also from the Palace Entertainment family. Surprise, Megan, you just can't get away from <laughs> us. Uh, I'm with Dutch Wonderland in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I'm the Human Resources Director. Um, I would have to say the word guide from my last name is probably a great descriptor of what I do. Um, the GM has said that she appreciates when I can give guidance and feedback to her on a multitude of issues, or I also enjoy guiding our um, teenager team members as well and helping them um, work through problems or improve performance issues and things like that. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And being in, in HR, that's a lot of what you do, right? You're, you're guiding people all the time. Mm -hmm. That's right. Very much. Awesome. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate that. Ty. Hi, I'm uh, Ty Vanderstappen. I'm the manager of attractions for the yet to open Legoland New York Resort. Um, I've been with them for uh, a year and a half now. Um, and I'd say a word to describe me uh, would be technical. I'm a big fan of making sure that SOPs and documents are you know, where they need to be at because that's where a lot of the training and 
opportunities that are based at, as well as I'm a big proponent of using like uh, data and analytics to determine how to make uh, decisions or seeing if changes are making improvements or not. Okay, very good, very good, excellent, excellent. Appreciate that, Ty. And uh, do you have a do you have an opening of when that when your resort's going to open? So we did have an opening of July fourth this year, but um, we have now pushed that back to sometime next year. Okay. Um, we haven't given an official exact date yet. Uh, luckily, construction in our region has now allowed to be resumed because um, it had been halted for about two months, I think. So um, that's starting to pick up again on the site. Um, so it will be interesting to see how, how well that goes. But okay. I'm next year. <laughs> okay. Well, all of, our, all of our positive vibes are behind you for an for a opening whenever that can happen for you. Thanks. Awesome. And uh, last but not least, Mr. Haircut. Thank you. <laughs> Josh, bring it. <laughs> sure. Uh, so my name is Josh Lieben. I'm the Director of Business Development for Amusement Advantage and the co-host of the Attraction Pros podcast. And <laughs> I, uh, one of my biggest focuses is on loyalty within the leisure industry. And I like to think that I'm pretty laid back and logical. So... I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go with all of those. And no, I did not just Google positive adjective <laughs> with L uh, while waiting for my turn here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got quite a few. And if if uh, if Stephanie's reaction was any indication, she kind of went, "What? Like <laughs> like talk about overachiever going last?" You I get know, right? Or do you think you're gonna get like extra bonus points or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just couldn't think of one, so I just had to throw them all in. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's just hoping that all of that detracts from our ability or, or desire to talk about his haircut. So that's, that's really what it's all about. So anyway, thank you all very much for doing that. I really appreciate it. It's so fun to, to get, it, get to know you all is uh, uh, not only from who you are and where you're from, but uh, a little bit more about you as a person. So um, let's kind of lay the groundwork for what we're going to be doing today. I'll go ahead and share the screen again over here. Doo -doo -doo. So, oops. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be split into two. So one group of four, one group of three, and we, you are going to be kind of um, brainstorming and talking about certain topics. And those topics can be the topics that were put into the, the registration system. You're, I'll, I'll share those in just a second. I also share those in an email just before, um, you know, just a couple of hours ago. Um, but when you get into your groups, what I'm going to ask you to do is, first of all, uh, pick someone to kind of be a leader of the group. And that doesn't mean that they have to lead the conversation. But um, when we come back from the group, we're going to ask that you share what you talked about with your, with your uh, group so that we can, um, you know, everybody can kind of learn and grow from that. So that leader would be somebody that could, you know, be your spokesperson, if you will, if you want to look at it that way. Also, a scribe, somebody to kind of write down the things that you're talking about. Um, because when you do come back, what we hope is that, for example, let's say you're talking about masks or you're talking about social distancing. Um, we want to know kind of what you talked about and what were some of those key takeaways or key best practices that you came up with as a way to share that with the other group because they weren't privy to your conversation. So not only do we want this to be a learning opportunity for you when you're in that group, but we also want to be able to share that back with the other group. Um, based on the time today, I, I set aside an hour and a half for this. So um, I'm hoping to get through at least three rounds of these conversations so that we'll, we'll get to dive into some, some, uh, some good uh, topics um, and get to do it on multiple topics so that you can have a lot of things to take away. So the second thing I'm going to ask you to do when, when you get into your groups is to pick pick what that first topic's gonna be. And you know, there might be a little round robin to talk about, okay, what do you, Ty, what do you wanna talk about? David, what do you wanna talk about? And then kind of come to a consensus on something that you wanna talk about first, and then kind of go with that topic. Um, I love what, what Sean said about wonder, because that's kind of what I want you to think about with this topic. I want you to wonder about this topic, right? You know, there's things that we've all experienced when it comes to a, a specific topic or, you know, how we're, how we're um, interfacing with our guests or our employees. But I really want you to think kind of outside the, outside the Zoom box, if you will. Um, think about how this topic might impact yourself or, you know, people that you haven't thought of yet. Like, what if people do this or what if people don't do that? That. Um, and really just kind of dive into the topic and see, see what kind of things you can come up with. Again, 
since there's no playbook, since there's no manual already for how we deal with COVID-19 and how we deal with our attractions, uh, there's some best practices out there, but who's to say that a new best practice doesn't come out of, of these topics. And then, like I mentioned before, I'm going to ask you to report back to the group so that, um, so that we can all have those learnings from, from each group. Okay, so those are the those are the things I'm going to ask you to do. Um, you can have different leaders and different scribes for different segments. That's totally fine. Um, in fact, I'd probably recommend it just so that one person isn't uh, stuck doing it at the entire time. Um, and then uh, you know, just like I said, once you get in there, uh, pick your topic, discuss it, and then be ready to report back to the group some of the some of those key learnings and key findings. Um, so here are the topics. What I'm gonna ask you to do is jot down like your top three. And honestly, they don't even have to be from this list, but if you had other things that you wanted to talk about or other areas that you wanted to explore, you can absolutely do that. So these are the ones that came in through the registration of, of, um, of people for the session. So, you know, communicating with staff about changes. Uh, I think that was David's about masks. Uh, keeping staff engaged. What does that new norm look like? Post-training follow-up. Uh, delivering on a super, superior guest experience. And two of them that came in after that email that I sent out were training with social distancing and then seasonal leadership training. So those two had, had come in um, after, the, um, uh, after the, the email that I sent out earlier. So um, pick maybe three that you're kind of most, most wanting to dive into and maybe jot those down so that you kind of have that in your, in your thought process when we do start those, uh, start those um, uh, breakouts. Okay. Does anybody still need this list up? All right, welcome back everyone. So um, I don't know if you guys named your group or whatever, but I have breakout one is with Ben and, uh, and Megan and Sean and Stephanie. So uh, Ben volunteered to go first or whoever the, the leader is in that group. So love to hear what you were talking about and any kind of takeaways that you think would be helpful for the other group to know. Yes, yeah, so I was a nominated scribe and we took on delivering a superior guest experience, uh, which was really nice because we had both uh, Stephanie and Megan's view for about to open and but then we also have the experience of Sean who has already opened so uh, I led things by talking about setting expectations and I looked at this more from a guest side of things um, with the work I've been doing down at Legoland Florida Resort um, and setting advance notice I guess for the guests before they've even arrived so online through the ticket buying process what are the new processes um, to help set that expectation so then when they actually turn up, it's less of a shock and, you know, marrying up guest experience to their expectations is absolutely key. Um, Sean started, started then off with um, talking about the fact that at uh, Zoo Atlanta, they have three um, sort of primary focuses when it comes to delivering guest experience, um, namely safety, hospitality and efficiency, um, and being able to rank those um, three elements kind of on the fly. A uh, nice example, as Sean said, was, you know, if a building's on fire, he's probably going to drop the hospitality side of things and be a bit more focused on safety and kicking people out of the room uh, sooner rather than later. So sort of trying to keep a focus on that um, within your teams. Um, they've just introduced time tickets for the first time um, in the zoo's history, which is a, a brand new concept, which, from what Sean was saying, has been going well. Um, Stephanie then led that they have very similar um, sort of processes and rankings, be it around safety, um, employee, cent employee centered, and hospitality. Um, and one of the really key things that Stephanie focused on is employees are still allowed to be friendly. They're still allow allowed to be hospitable. Um, you know, we're all human at the end of the day through all of this. So, you know what? You may not be able to high five kids, but the example she gave was their train that goes around. You know, you're allowed to wave at people, you're allowed to interact. You know, if processes will allow it, you know, still offer to take that photo from the family's phone if you've got a pair of disposable gloves, for example. It's a very simple and sort of cost-effective process you can have, um, but it's something that's that, it breaks down that barrier. I think everyone's going into these new, new openings with a sense of, well, I can't get anyone within my bubble, uh, whereas things are slowly starting to return back to normal a little bit. Um, Smiling was something that was very important. Obviously, if you are behind a mask, it can be difficult to tell uh, if someone's smiling, but I would still say that that's something to keep your staff focused on. Um, Megan then followed up 
uh, with the fact that obviously your standards are still to be the same just because we've come out of this doesn't mean you can really drop the ball on what they've already been trained uh, beforehand um, one of the cool things that Stephanie then came back in with was if you do have any sort of guest potentially guest complaint or guest issues is maybe sort of at your supervisor level uh, get them to potentially sort of remember some key phrases and key terminology um, so if there's some immediate complaints that they may have around the mask situation, around distancing, around having to go one way, not another, um, sort of have your staff keyed up and trained, ready to fire that straight off. Um, and then the last bit we finished on with Sean is the fact that in an open attraction, people have been very understanding. Um, so he hasn't had too many major events. You know, guests are expecting it to be different, but when there have been things, you know, they have sort of taken heed and been understanding of the situation. And I'm out. <laughs> thank you, Ben. I appreciate that. And, and thank you uh, for that for that group. Um, one of the things I really appreciated that you guys talked about was the fact that, you know, you're still allowed to have fun. And like we shouldn't, there are a lot of barriers, but we shouldn't allow those to, you know, get in the way of some of those basic things that we do, like taking pictures or high, you know, not high fiving, but waving. And, you know, what are those alternatives that we can do that still show that we're hospitable and we care? We're just socially distant or, you know, you know, abiding by those guidelines. So I really appreciate that. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So breakout room two, who was our uh, scribe leader person? Josh, go for it. Sure. Uh, so the two things we talked about, uh, we talked about masks in a changing climate. And we also talked about it, uh, engaging employees and guests. And uh, the masks uh, component was was interesting because we talked about it uh, changing climate both literally literally and figuratively. We talked about the uh, uh, triple digit temperatures in California, which even yesterday in Chicago was like ninety five degrees. So yeah, wearing masks is unpleasant. We all we all know that. We all acknowledge that, uh, even if we're requiring it. Um, and what's interesting that you know that David shared you know now being open for the last few weeks is that even the guest mindset has changed uh, from when they first opened that there was uh, substantially more more compliance and saying, well, you know, we'll do whatever we need to do, you know, to, to make sure we're able to enjoy ourselves uh, in a safe and comfortable way. And now there are um, uh, more, more guests who are pushing back a little bit with, you know, with the mask policy who are starting to visit. So uh, about, you know, to, you know, just just managing that from the um, from the safety enforcement component, but also from you know from the guest experience standpoint, as far as uh, making sure that that guests are both comfortable and safe and adhering to the policy, um, even if they are you know starting to push the envelope just a little bit in what they are trying to get away with a little bit, especially when it comes to food and beverage. Uh, we know that you can't have food and beverage and have your mask on at the same time, you know, simultaneously. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if guests, you know, have a popcorn or like have a drink or something like that, pull their mask down, then they might, they might forget in air quotes to put it back up right away. Or, you know, we're, we're all still trying to know what, what the rule is. If I take a sip of something, how long do I have to put my mask back up before I'm now breaking the rules or, you know, or, or going against policy? So these are, these are still new challenges that are uh, presenting themselves even as we you know, learn more and more about kind of what, what all of this looks like of operating during this time. Um, and as far as uh, you know, guests uh, arriving to the parks or to the facilities of that immediate enforcement or immediate uh, reminder of what the policy is and turning them away if they either don't have a mask or are not going to be compliant with with the policy or with the procedure. Um, David mentioned that the employees at Fiesta Village have been very pro-mask and uh, you know have been um, you know, very much uh, in, enforcing it, not just for themselves, but also, you know, gentle reminders with guests as well. And, you know, when talking to either guests or when talking to just other, other people that we know that there's, uh, you know, very, not only varying opinions, but also varying preferences for themselves of people saying, um, yes, I, I will go out in public. And if masks are not required, I won't wear a mask. Um, and if masks are required, I will wear one. 
And even to the point of several people may have said that they intend to wear a mask until they are vaccinated so that there's no particular uh, end date in sight. And, you know, at, at this point, as far as when they'll stop wearing a mask in public. Um, and then we talked about engaging employees and guests. And uh, Ty was talking about what uh, Legoland New York has been doing, which is really interesting because, you know, the, the park, you know, like you mentioned, was scheduled to open on July 4th. And now this is uh, pushed back to opening in 2021. So uh, looking at, you know, what that means from, from a social media standpoint. So engaging with guests, you know, needs to be a little bit lighter. So, you know, social media has been a little bit uh, more limited from that standpoint. Um, as far as employees go, Ty mentioned that all uh, seasonal staff members who they're not able to employ this summer, that their job offer uh, stands for next year, and that they've been doing a number of things with their staff throughout this time, things like uh, Zoom trivia with employees and uh, keeping staff members informed um, of the park's construction process or of anything going on with the park during this time, um, while also uh, kind of balancing the line of wanting to stay engaged with uh, staff who are either furloughed or the seasonal staff who they're not able to employ this summer, while also making sure that it's not an over communication to the point where it would be that the way a manager would communicate with an active employee. So as far as making it more informational and not not over communicating, but you know finding that line that it is the perfect amount of communication to to stay engaged and let employees know that they are top of mind throughout this time. Okay, great. So you guys tackled quite a bit in that time. That's awesome. And I think one of the things that, that I take away from that debrief is that, you know, with the masks, like everything else, you know, it really is an ever changing process. Right. And, and that's going to be, I think, driven as much by the CDC guidelines as it is by, you know, a team member and, and guest, um, um, outlook on it, right? David saying that the, his team members are very pro mask, so they're probably going to wear them for a long time. And, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what the guests are going to be able to tolerate, you know, over time. So that's, that's great, great input. I appreciate that. So um, let's go to another, uh, another breakout. Um, so pick a new topic, pick a new leader, if you'd like. Um, I've switched the groups up just for the fun of it, just to see what happens. Um, so, you know, a couple of different people in different places. And um, so this one, I'll give you about 10 minutes just to, because uh, we, we've already done one of these. So we'll do 10 minutes on this one and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it again. So here we go. We're going to open up the, break, or the uh, breakout rooms. Uh, yeah, sure. So we decided to talk about post-training follow-up. Um, because David is already open and we are looking to open soon. So it's really, really helpful for me. Um, and something really interesting that David was talking about is that he has been training uh, or his organization has been training everybody to kind of do everything. So everybody knows a little bit like, or knows how to do every single job there. And there's no holes in between departments. Um, so everybody can cover every area. And he was saying that the response from his team members was very positive. And I thought that was really interesting because uh, we were actually talking about doing something very similar where, you know, if you're a supervisor for a department, you're no longer just the ride supervisor or the retail supervisor, but you're going to be a park supervisor this year. You kind of have to know more and learn more about the entire park and um, be able to answer more questions. And then the other thing we're doing too is every single team member this year is going to have to know how to clean and sanitize, <laughs> of course. And you know, before everybody, that's part of everyone's job, but not to the intensity that we're doing this year. So we're actually having specific cleaning crews um, that is just a part of everybody's job. So, you know, one day you could be scheduled to be operating a, a roller coaster. And then the next day you're scheduled to go through and clean and sanitize all the queue lines throughout the amusement park. Just so, you know, we're keeping up on the cleanliness and the sanitization, of course. Um, so I thought that was really cool. And then David was also mentioning that it helps with everybody's confidence in knowing more and learning more. And it, um, so yeah, that's what we talked about. <laughs> okay, no, that's great. I agree, appreciate that, Megan. Uh, how about from the other group? Uh, I, I, I think I realized now we didn't really pick a leader, so I'll, I'll be that. Um, Way to step up, Ty. We appreciate it. <laughs> um, so our topic, we were talking about uh, training with social distancing. 
Um, so Sean talked a lot about this since, you know, they've kind of already been doing this since they've been open. Um, and some of the things they've been doing is, um, you know, trying to send some of the training information in advance so they can complete at home and they still get paid for that time, but providing information on how to properly clean or put on and take off gloves. Um, and then, you know, once, once they come in and they can do like small tours of the, the zoo so they can understand kind of the guest flow and the expectations guests have, as well as what the employees have so they can kind of answer questions better. Um, some of that training that they provide, you know, is, you know, the symptoms of COVID, you know, what, what you can do before you come in or, you know, temperature check yourself at home since they're not requiring that there. Um, you know, trying to communicate uh, changes of the zoo operation as that evolves. So, you know, if another building opens or they're expanding certain areas, making sure employees understand that so they can um, help provide that information to guests as that changes. Um, Stephanie had mentioned, you know, looking online to how to continue some of those uh, trainings online. So using like Zoom webinar or um, she had said that Megan mentioned they are using uh, Google Classrooms to try to provide those trainings online. So you can still try to keep that distance apart as for as much training as possible before they come in. But some jobs like attractions or uh, food and beverage, there's certain skills you have to learn that you can't do at home. So how do you maintain that distance there where, you know, maybe you have to wipe down the panels more when you're switching between trainer and trainee or keeping your distance as much as possible and wearing masks when you're providing the training on how to do certain parts of the job. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, uh, I, I love the fact that you're, you're, you're both, we're kind of talking about training because, you know, that's something I love. But um, one of the things I'll, I'll tag on to with that discussion of social distancing and training, um, I was talking to a, a client this morning and they said that they were able to bring in their supervisors, their seasonal supervisors that are normally very, um, you know, fun and jovial and look, uh, joking around and everything. And they had them in a room and they were all socially distanced and they all had masks. And they said it was the worst thing in the world because everybody was just like a stone statue, right? They felt like, you know, going back to our point before, they, they didn't realize that they're still allowed to have fun and interact just at a safe distance and, you know, with their masks on. So it was it really interesting to see how that, that physical environment really impacted, you know, how they acted um, socially when they were, when they were in, that, uh, in that environment. So um, great, really great stuff that you guys, guys brought up there. So um fantastic so it looks like there's a, there's a thing over here that, that was just for me so i've got to leave in 15 minutes so okay cool 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 cool. no i appreciate that so we'll go ahead and do one more round this will be 10 minutes so we can get ben in here for that one um i've switched the groups up again so we've got three and three this time we'll do um you know pick a topic 10 minutes and then we'll come on back Well, welcome back. At least on my screen, you all kind of came back at the same time. So no points for getting back first. So um, who would like to uh, start us off by uh, giving us a quick debrief of your session? I'll kick things off because I'm aware of time and I've got to run in about four minutes. Fantastic. Um, we took on the topic of um, how, you, how you're going to keep in touch with your staff um, initially from the question that was posted by Matt around sort of emotional and financial welfare, uh, but it sort of migrated into through the current crisis and also in terms of what's going forward. Um, so it was uh, Stephanie that said um, that they were using the HR mechanism to, whereas typically this time of year, they would be reaching out to their primarily seasonal staff um, and remind them to do training courses to make sure they're checking their schedule, check the weather and things like that. Uh, that messaging has now obviously been very much across as things like if you're going to use vacation time that you're occurring um make sure you properly log it before the payroll date things are still relatively normal uh but then one of the big changes uh, that stephanie said she's actively done is obviously helping out you know the less fortunate the people over there so giving people free advice of where food banks are uh, letting people know that there are mechanisms in place if they want to delay mortgage payments potentially offset rent and things like that so that was good that there's you know a, a an open channel of communication um, rather than it being specific individuals. It's kind of a blanket to everyone reaching out. Um, I questioned whether COVID-19 
uh, may well trigger a bit more of a change in culture amongst organisations and wanting to care care about their families and or employees and treat them more like family, um, potentially. Um, then we had Ty that came on and mentioned about um, how there's slightly different messaging depending on whether you've been furloughed or not. Um, so if you're not furloughed and you're still working, you're potentially still getting more sensitive information about an organisation with opening dates and things like that that aren't in necessarily the public domain uh, versus your furloughed staff and restricting communications to their personal emails uh, for those times. Um, and I think that's pretty much... Oh, and I think it was Stephanie as well. Maybe not. No, it wasn't. I think I can't remember who it was. Uh, but just saying how when people were furloughed, the seasonal staff got an email. I think this was actually Ty. Seasonal staff got an email sent out to them. Um, but if they were um, full time, then they typically got a call from their direct manager or from HR to explain what was going on, uh, just to keep them informed. Okay, great. Thank you for that recap, Ben. I appreciate that. And I know you've got to run here probably in about 30 seconds, but thank you for that. And thank you for being here. Uh, thank you also to that group for, uh, for all that great information. You know, Ben brought up culture and um, one large um, uh, amusement park chain uh, that I was talking to said that they are actually going to be focusing more on employee engagement and health than they are on profits. Not that they're not going to look at profits, but they are, there's definitely a difference in where they're putting their priorities this year. So um, to Ben's point, I think there, there is some, some of that culture change happening. Will it last? We'll see. But at, at least for this year, the, the, they're, they're looking that way. So awesome. Thank you for that. So how about from Sean, Megan, or David? Thank you, uh, Ben. So we started talking about just some of the biggest challenges with creating opening strategies. And mm -hmm. um, it, it really started to go down a path of bringing back all of the staff and the team members that we need <laughs> in order to, to create these experiences for our guests and curate that. So, um, you know, Megan started off with a, you know, it was a challenge to get approval, to get a lot of things back in and to start to, to bring back a lot of teammates um, and to get them trained in such a short period of time because it, I think Megan, and correct me if I was wrong here, but you say you usually have months and months and months to hire staff and to train them and to get them ready to open. And now it sounds like you may have like a month. Um, and that's, that's compressing all of that. And, and how does one do that? Um, there may have been staff that, you know, we, we made offers to and, you know, they, they couldn't even start. So maybe they found a job somewhere else. And so they, they're not going to be coming or, or they won't be coming back for fear or for whatever reason. Um, and then uh, Megan said they've been obviously pushing a lot of training online. So that's how they've been working to try to prepare a lot of a lot of team members to, to come back feel comfortable and then um you know we started to talk about it as david's open we're open and we it's it's interesting um you know we're also similar in that we experience a lot of similar things and that we we talked to some staff who were really uncomfortable about coming back and in, in the decision with us reopening um for example we had one team member that hadn't left her house for 10 weeks um, she has things delivered to her house and um hasn't really had anybody over and has only done Zoom calls and whatnot. So she was very uncomfortable coming back and, and HR spent time and, and really pulled off that HR had and really just listened uh, to that person. And, you know, they, they came on grounds, they took the tour, they felt more comfortable after they did our on grounds tour. They were still nervous on their very first day because this person was somebody that typically works uh, behind the scenes in an office and not really with guests. And after her first day, she came up to me and said, you know, this went really, really well. And I'm, I'm actually really glad to be back. Um, I've, I've kind of broken down a lot of my fears. And the, the good news about her having that experience is she can now better empathize with some of our guests that are coming in and may be uncomfortable uh, about coming in as well. So, um, but you know, we also have a lot, of, a lot of staff who are really excited uh, to come back. And um, you know, Dave said he, he had some folks that were nervous, but they were also really excited to come back too. And um, in a lot of those cases, we maybe had to call people or, or he talked to them one-on-one -on -one and, and, you know, said, what are your concerns? What are your fears? And, and uh, he, David can now add therapist uh, to his LinkedIn profile because he had great discussions with his, with his team members. And it's really treating individuals as individuals and, and helping them feel comfortable about coming back because everybody's level of excitement or fear may be a little bit different. 
Um, you know, we, we have probably all spent a lot of time planning these experiences for our guests. And so we're obviously more comfortable with it because we, we feel like we've thought through everything, but a team members may not have. So explaining to them why we made these decisions, um, because they may have been, you know, catching up on everything on Netflix. Well, yeah. well, everybody in this room may have been doing a lot of webinars. Um, and then we had a little bit of time left. So um, David was telling us some about about some of the things that they're doing in their phase one reopening with uh, limited capacity, a lot of social distancing measures, and just some changes on you know when when um, like when the go with the go karts if if somebody has a spin out how they're having to react to that a little bit differently uh, than what they, than what they used to. Yeah, that's excellent. And Sean, I want to go back to your point about that team member that wasn't really comfortable, uh, but now when, when they came back and they were able to go through it and they feel comfortable, I think they can also not only empathize with the guests, but they can also advocate for other team members, right? That may feel that way. And like, I got through this and this is how I did it. And, you know, be a great resource for them as well. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you all for, for um, that last round, but also thank you for kind of going through this experiment with me, uh, but, but using these, these breakout rooms and kind of doing this virtual round table. I hope you found it beneficial um, and you got some really good stuff out of it. One thing I don't think I mentioned in the beginning is that this is all being recorded and I, I couldn't record the breakout conversations. I think that would have been interesting, but any of the, all this debrief um, I'm going to put together and uh, you'll be able to, I'll send you the link so that you can kind of look back through that. And if there was things that people said that you didn't get to write down, then you can, you can have that, uh, have that as a resource as well. Um, and then speaking of other things kind of going forward, I think all of you are probably part of the all clear group on Facebook, but if you are not, uh, that is a great place to continue um, with with uh, information sharing and things like that. Um, encourage everybody to be part of that. If there's people in your organization that you think would be uh, beneficial to be uh, to being in that group, then please feel free to invite them. Um, you, I think most of you also know that Josh and I also do the Attraction Pros podcast, which is something that we've we've uh, done for almost two and a half years now. And uh, we've also been doing a COVID-19 video series. We've got almost 30 videos in that series. Uh, David has done one. Sean, you're going to be doing one next week. So this is, or I think it's next week. Yeah. Um, so super excited about that. So that's a lot of content about what people have been doing and getting ready for, uh, you know, reopening for COVID-19. So um, if you're looking for uh, more uh, resources for that, then, then go ahead and check that out. And that's on the attractionpros.com uh, website. Um, like this was sort of an experiment, and I know that you, a lot of you are experimenting with how you are moving your business forward. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing, and some of you may have seen an email on this, um, is that I'm starting, uh, I'm doing a, a, a workshop next week uh, around strategic conversations. Now, this one, there is a charge. Every other web or webinar I've done has been uh, free. The reason there's a charge for this one is because it's very... Um, uh, very focused on uh, a very small audience there. I can, I can only take six people at a time because what we're going to be doing is going through a strategic conversation, uh, uh, conversation map of how to get through really high stake strategic conversations. And, and uh, the participants will be going through not only that model, but they're going to be um, practicing that conversation and then getting feedback on that conversation. So, you know, I'm experimenting also with getting my, my business out there in terms of, you know, how we can, you know, take some of this deeper learning, even deeper than what we did today, you know, really deeper learning and, and put that in an online format. So I just, I share that with you. Um, if that's something you're interested in and available for, it'll be next, next Wednesday, same time as this one, uh, June 10th. So, uh, I really want to thank everybody for their time and their attention today. Uh, uh, I really enjoyed kind of listening in on those um, uh, uh, on the the breakout sessions just to hear what you guys talked about, which was super fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Um, so I will be sending out a um, uh, a survey. Uh, if you could, you know, do me a favor and just take a couple of minutes to to fill that out and let me know what you thought. Um, this was a small group and I thought it was great. I'd love to be able to reach more people like this. Um, of course, I think we're also, you know, some of us are getting webinar uh, burnout a little bit and Zoom burnout, which I totally understand, uh, but always looking for ways that, uh, that I can help and I can provide resources for the industry. So if you have any other suggestions of things that you think might be helpful to you and your teams, 
I'm absolutely open to hearing any of those things. So with that, I want to be respectful of your time. And uh, thank you again very, very much for being here. It was an absolute pleasure to see you and to hear all of your ideas. And uh, look for an email with the, uh, the link to this so that you can, you can relive all the fun that we had today. So thanks, everybody, for your time. Uh, everybody stay safe, and we'll see you soon. All right, great. Thank you. Yep, you bet. Oh, bye, Josh. You got here just in time to say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> we're, we're, we're out, Josh. <laughs> so he's, so he's, he's like, see ya. Yeah. Bye, Matt. Thanks again. Thank you, Stephanie. Take care. <laughs>